Hey everyone, it's Ron Johnson, and this is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. Exciting week. We got the Gophers playing Michigan on primetime. You got the Chiefs playing the Vikings on primetime. Well, 325, so semi-primetime. And we have to talk about which team, because both are underdogs. Both are underdogs. Which team has a chance to really pull off the upset that the world has been talking about? And we also have Jack Henderson, Gophers jack of all trades, safety, nickel, corner, cover guy, special teams. Had a big game against North Carolina. Had another big game against uh, uh, Northwestern. And then had another good game against Louisiana and the Raging Cajuns. We're going to talk to him in the Hanging Around Johnson segment. But first, we have to talk about this Vikings and this Gophers potential upsets. We'll talk about that next on the Ron Johnson Show. Locked on Sports Minnesota Podcast. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. Now the Ron Johnson Show. On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. He's played with them, hung out with them, and grown up with all the big names in Minnesota sports. They're hanging out with Ron Johnson. It's the Ron Johnson Show on the Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast. And it starts now. Hey, everybody, it's Ron Johnson. This is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. I want everybody to know today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com backslash locked on or enter promo code locked on when you go to birddogs.com for a free water bottle with any purchase. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Well, as we head into this show, we got to talk about the Vikings and the Gophers. Two teams. Um, both coaches kind of were on hot seats or warm seats, if you want to call it the Vikings more so than the Gophers, because the Gophers have had a past of winning. The Vikings have had one season at 13 and four, and now they are headed to a potential, potential one and five or two and six start, which is not the way to start off this season and think you have a chance to make the playoffs and win the division. But then I bring my producer to the show, Sam Ekstrom, Sam. You have the spreads, so just lay it out for us. What what are the FanDuel spreads right now for Michigan versus Minnesota at 6.30 mm-hmm. p.m. under the lights, and then Vikings versus Chiefs at 3.25, primetime midday football. Yeah, a lot of eyeballs on these two games. Um, the Chiefs and Vikings currently sitting at five and a half. FanDuel expecting a high-scoring game over under of 52 and a half. So I think doing the quick math on that, they're expecting about uh 29 24 Chiefs victory. Uh, Michigan and Minnesota, Ron, it looks a little bleaker for your mm-hmm. Gophers. It started out as 20 and a half, but the good news is people have bet enough on the Gophers that thing's under 20 now. It's 19 and a half favoring Michigan at Huntington Bank, Bank Stadium. So we're talking a three touchdown spread, Ron. Um, people a little more confident in the Vikings than they are the, are the Gophers, but what do you think? Um, I understand the confidence in the Vikings, and here's here's why. One, they're at home. Two, the fans have heard enough about um, the crowd noise. And, hey, when Kirk Cousins at work, we need to be quiet. Even if there's a go Chiefs, go chant, we need to just relax and not try to – because that's what some fans tweeted, that, hey, I was in the section that was doing that too, and there was a, a, um, a go Chargers, go chant – so Vikings fans wanted to drown them out. I'm like, but you don't need to drown them out. Like, let them to screen, go Chargers, go while Kirk Cousins goes to work. You guys don't need to over, like, it's, it's not a battle between the fans. If you guys win the loud contest, you don't win the game. And so if you're playing chess, the Chargers might have won that chess match because their fans got you guys to get extremely loud when Kirk Cousins needed to be quiet the most. Um, but when you get them at home, you're going to have Patrick Mahomes. You probably have a, a a Taylor Swift check in. She's not going to be there, but you'll have. They'll probably check in to Taylor Swift wherever she's at. Let's go to Taylor Swift right now and see if she's streaming Travis Kelsey on her phone right now because she's just dire. And then of course there's pictures last night of them being out, or, or not last night, Sunday night of them being out after the game. You know, after the game somewhere, they were canoodling and hanging out, and her arms around them, and she looks like she's had some libations. Travis Kelsey looks like he's tired and wants to go home. Like most players after a game, when people try to say, let's party, 
dude, I just went through a car crash seven times and you want me to sit up here and party? Hey, I get I give you guys an hour and I'm done. And that's what the picture looked like. It looked like both of them were tired. They were ready to go home and go to sleep. But when you look at this game, upset potential. The Vikings, I think, have the best chance to upset the Chiefs. Only reason is because you saw the Chiefs versus the Jets. The Chiefs got a lot of help from the referees. Uh, there were a lot of questionable calls. Maybe the referees are Swifties as well, and they didn't want to let Taylor Swift down. Um, the funniest thing I've heard so far is that Taylor Swift won't come to U.S. Bank Stadium. The script writers for the NFL will have the Vikings win that one, and then the world will blame T. Swift for not showing up because she is they're undefeated under the T. Swift era. Yeah. Two and the, the the Swift era Chiefs, uh, the Eras tour for the Chiefs are undefeated. So if they go two and one and she's not on tour with the team, we're gonna have a reason to like and like Blake, Blake Lively, uh, you know, what, what's what's her husband's name? Ryan, Ryan Reynolds, Reynolds, you know, like you, you get all the stars out. There's I mean, I don't know who's gonna be at this one. Cisco, um, you have Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, uh, maybe Kevin Garnett shows up for this one. Uh, who else might be in town? I don't know. You, you might have you, Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards probably will be if they don't have anything going on. He'll probably be there. Cat might be there. Uh, so you'll get some. Maybe A Rod comes out. You know, uh, there are some baseball ties with Patrick yeah. Mahomes. A Rod's uh, here this week for the uh, Twin Series. I think he's yeah. announcing it. So maybe he will be at the uh, Vikings game if he can get a chance to get over there. Um, so you know the, the stars will be out, but maybe I don't know if T, T Swift will be there or not. Uh, but if she's not. That's the that's the rumor. The Vikings will win in an upset fashion, and then all of Twitterdom will erupt to say the the terror the Taylor Swift era is still two and zero. Oh. Whenever Taylor arrives, they win. Whenever Taylor doesn't go, well, you saw them lose to the Lions, and now you're going to see them lose to the Vikings potentially. But for the Vikings, it's not do or die, but it kind of is. It's starting to feel like that now because you didn't win the Chiefs, the Chargers game, or the Bucks game, which should have been winnable. The 49ers game, in this game, I counted as losses. I don't know about you. I knew they could beat the Bears, mm -hmm. but I counted these next two out of these three as losses. But at this point, I assumed they would have lost to the Eagles. I assumed they would have beat the Bucks and beat the Chargers and so and then beat the Panthers. I had them at this point three and three. I thought this would have been a three and three mark at this point um, after the, uh, the 49ers game, which is fine. Three and three, they're still in the division. Can they get to three and three, Sam? And that's my question to you. Do you think the Vikings can somehow get two out of these three games? Which would put them at three I, and four. Three I, and four. I, and no, I, I don't think they can, Ron. I mean, I think that it, this is laid out pretty clearly for them to go loss, win, loss. And that would put them at three. No, I'm sorry, two and five. Then the schedule lightens up a lot, Ron. I mean, they then they've got the Falcons, Saints, Raiders. Bears, Broncos. So there's a path to get back to 500, but it's going to mm -hmm. happen later in the season. I actually think the 49ers might be a tougher game than the Chiefs, mm -hmm. and the Chiefs are pretty tough. But the 49ers look sharper. Their defense looks unbelievable. Purdy's never lost. I don't want to disrespect Patrick Mahomes. I'm actually more worried about San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Kansas City, Yeah, the, the thing about Kansas City is they have bigger fish to fry right? They make the Super Bowl like every year. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have these little hiccups during the regular season where they don't look sharp, but that's fine because they'll be ready for the Super Bowl. The 49ers are pedal to the metal. Like they want to get, they want to be a one seed. They want to get to the Super Bowl. Purdy never wants to lose. So that's the game that worries me. I think that it's going to be brutally hard to win one of them, but you are at home. So that's the one thing you have going in your favor. Yeah, and so yeah, I mean that's that's the thing to look at when you. I mean, Chiefs are up first. Um, can they upset the Chiefs? I think so. I think they have a chance. Um, but a lot of people pointed out T.J. Hawkins has been kind of like hit or miss. Like he hasn't been consistent. It's been like, oh, there's T.J. Hawkins in great game. And then it's like, well, where T.J. Hawkins go? Um, and so the consistency is the key. Like, can he be consistent throughout the season? Can he be a, a outlet for Kirk Cousins? Um, this wasn't a big throwing production game for Kirk anyway, only 19 attempts, uh, but they got the W. So I think people would, you know, kind of Tanner Morgan-ish. Hey, you throw for less than 20, but you win, we'll take it. Uh, I did pick Alexander Madison as my lottery pick. Uh, he did almost have 100 yards, 95 yards. So the people that said like, oh, you're dumb, uh, it was close. He pretty much was the best option other than Justin Jefferson's 
two touchdowns, I couldn't pick Justin Jefferson because I could pick him every week, and then that's boring. Um, so if I'm picking a lottery ticket, I mean, it is a long shot, but I possibly can win the lottery. Alexander Madison was close, and I need to subtweet or uh, quote tweet the Vikings because all the fans are saying, this, this ain't it. Alexander Madison ain't running about, man, the dude almost had 100 yards. So shut your mouths. Uh, they're getting the run game going. They're trying to get it going. Uh, switching gears over to college football, though, Sam, when you think about Michigan, here's the thing about Michigan that's scary. They are the number one defense in the Big Ten right now. They've only given up six points a game. They have a guy by the name of Roman Wilson. He wears number one for Michigan. If anybody knows, and I'm from Detroit, so I know a lot about Michigan football, number one means you're the guy at receiver. Like, you don't just get handed number one. You earn it. Uh, David Terrell came in as a freshman. I don't think he earned it, but they gave it to him because he was that that dude, and he he showed it early on. Uh, Braylon Edwards started off his career as 80. They gave him number one his sophomore year because he was that dude. Um, Roman Wilson is now number one. He's that guy. And so when you get that number one, you're the target. So it's it's kind of Roman Wilson versus the rest of the team. Like they go, they they get him the ball a lot. Uh, he has a lot of big time situations. The biggest thing for him is TDs over catches. He only has 19 catches. This dude has eight TDs. He's leading the Big Ten in uh receiving touchdowns with eight. And so that's what's kind of scary. Is like he's not a high producing receiver like he only has 19 catches for 326 yards in five games but he has eight touchdowns in five games sam like the dude is on pace for like 16 to 18 touchdowns because of how they use him in the red zone and so when you think about the gophers that's where they shine rossi seems to bend but don't break he lets guys rush down and but michigan's not that team like you don't want to let them get into the red zone because that's when they're really good and they get really dangerous uh the funniest thing i've heard to this was urban meyer i don't know if you saw this tweet but Urban Meyer on the pregame show, Big Fox Noon Show, said that uh, Michigan is going to lose to Nebraska because they haven't played anybody. I don't know if you saw that. Sam, what do you do? You know the score of the Michigan-Nebraska game? Uh, a lot of points to very few points. I can't 45, remember the exact number. Forty-five points, Sam. Forty-five to seven. Yeah. Now on my pregame show, I said Michigan was going to boat race Iowa. Now people thought I was being biased because I hate Iowa. I wasn't being biased. Michigan is an absolute is an actual threat, and Brian Ferentz is not. Like I would look at Iowa's offense as like a nice little kitty cat that I want to give milk to. I would look at Michigan's offense as a freaking tiger, a Bengal tiger in the bathroom, like in in a hangover. Like there's a freaking like if the Michigan show, it's a tiger in the bathroom. That's the sense of urgency you need to have against Michigan's offense. There's a freaking tiger in the bathroom. Like the way Allen looked at that tiger, the way uh, they ran and screamed, Mike Tyson had to get like that's the that's like you need to feed Michigan a steak with sleeping pills, like that's the way that offense like you need to make sure that that they're fat cats. Feed them well at the hotel the night before the game. Give them a great breakfast. Um, make sure they have a lot of whipped cream with their with their waffles. Like don't don't feed them good. Don't give them smoothies. Like make sure they're fat. And that's what Michigan is. I mean, they are the Wolverines, so they are actually a scary cat. I think a Wolverine's a cat, right, Sam? Is a cat family? A I feline? Think. Yeah, I think it's a feline family. Yeah. Um, so that's that's where I look at it. So for Urban Meyer to say that, one, that's just Ohio State hates Michigan bias, I feel like. Uh, probably the same way I said Michigan was going to boat race Iowa, which they actually did. I hope that they don't boat race Minnesota because their defense is actually really good. Now, all Iowa's offense sucks. We know that. It's not good. Um, they have good players like Kay McNamara, but unfortunately, Kay McNamara got hurt, and that might have been part of it too. Uh, but I think at that, uh, no, I think at that point the game was over, um, or it wasn't over, but it was out of reach. But Kay McNamara got hurt, so it sucks for him. Uh, former Michigan guy, I know he really wanted to show Michigan, like you, you should have let me stay and play. You should have, you should have, you know, respected my, respected me. You should have treated me better. Uh, but he ended up transferring to Iowa, and then he gets hurt against Michigan. Like that's you can't write a worse script like there's some great scripts out there that's the worst script possible you get to play your old school your old team and then you get hurt and for the season like it looks like he's out for the season with a leg injury like college doesn't have to report exactly what it is mm -hmm. um they're just saying leg injury and he's out for the season i couldn't tell it, it looked like it like a like a thigh or knee or bone like i couldn't i couldn't tell what it was like for all we know it could be an achilles because you know they don't really tell you much they just say lower leg or leg injury apparent leg injury and he looks like he's done for the season. So, sucks for them. Uh, but Michigan, if I had to pick between the two, Sam, I'm going to pick uh, the Vikings have a chance. I don't I don't think Minnesota has a chance to upset them. 
but here's how they can. Now, Darius Taylor, one, didn't play last week. I think I called that on a postgame show that, after you know, during the Northwestern game, not seeing him out there, I was the first person to report that, that why is he not in the game? Clearly he's hurt. Uh, hopefully he can make it to next week. He didn't. He was still out with whether it was concussion protocol or what, but he was out. Hopefully he gets out the protocol because, you know, that you never know with that thing. Um, and he can play against Michigan. Why? Because him and him and Zach Evans together can run the ball. Running the ball keeps the clock going. Keeps the clock going, keeps the chains going. Keeps the chains going, keeps Michigan off the field. If you can keep Michigan's offense off the field and, and make their defense work harder than they want to, that's how you get this done. Um, they've upset Michigan before. I think 2014 in the big house, they upset Michigan. Yep. I think that's going to be the next Jerry key. Kill. Mm-hmm. Yep, Jerry Kill. 2014, they upset Michigan. I know uh, there were some other times Glenn Mason had done it. Um, Glenn Mason also blew a big lead as well with Michigan. Uh, I think my rookie year, 2003 or 2002, I remember watching that game and then going to meetings and then coming out that game and they were losing. Uh, they were winning when I went to the meeting. And then when I came out the team meeting, they were losing. And everybody on my team with the Baltimore Ravens, let me know about it. What's going on with you guys, man? They're blowing it. Like, And I'm standing in a hotel looking at the TV in the bar and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Um, but Minnesota can get it done. With Darius Taylor, Sam. I don't know. What are your thoughts on Michigan, Minnesota? Quick, before we jump over to the uh, Hang Ron Johnson segment. Yeah, um, I'm scouting JJ McCarthy. I want to get my eyes on him. Is True, he a candidate for next yeah. year. Uh, I'm looking at his numbers so far. Extremely accurate. 79% passer. I don't know what happened against Bowling Green. He threw three picks in that game. So eliminate the Bowling Green game, and he has eight touchdowns, zero interceptions, and only been sacked twice in Mm. those four games, which tells me something about him, tells me he's decisive with the football. He's got good sack avoidance. He's not going to take 11 sacks like Daniel Jones did last night. Uh, So I like, I like the early numbers on JJ McCarthy, but now I got to see him. So I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for the Gophers, but I'm also scouting Ron. I'm always scouting for the future of the Vikings quarterback position. I like that. And the the key to this too, what a lot of people didn't realize, and I didn't realize this, Sam, Minnesota, on the season, it's tied for first place in the in the in the in the uh, Big Ten with interceptions. They have two guys in the top five: Jack Henderson and Tyler Newman with two and three. They have five s- interceptions combined, and then the Gophers have eight tied with Maryland and Talia Tagovailoa's defense. You got mm-hmm. Wisconsin, Penn State, Indiana, and then you got Michigan with five. So Minnesota opportunistic. Can they make J.J. McCarthy throw the ball sooner than he wants to? We know Joe Rossi's defense. Every once in a while, he likes to blitz the corners. We saw uh, Trayvon Jones. He's had a a decent season so far. Really good complimentary piece of his defense. But Jack Henderson, man, like we got him coming up in the in the in the uh, next segment, hanging around Johnson, and um, he's had he's got to have a big game. Now he's had some big games. We we talked to him a while back, right after North or right after the Northwestern loss. Um, They they turned it around, like he said, and they end up. You know, the response, they beat Louisiana Monroe or Louisiana or Lafayette, whatever. Raging Cajuns now, they're just Louisiana. They're neat. They're no city, um, but they're the Raging Cajuns. But Jack Henderson has to have a big game. Like you said, he has to confuse J.J. McCarthy and try to get another interception or at least just make it a hard day for him. Because if that kid can go out there and throw 80% of his completions, it's going to be a long day. But coming up next, we got Jack Henderson joining us on the Hanging Around Johnson segment. Before we do that, we have a word from our sponsors. Do you like clothing that is versatile, that you can wear to the pool, to the gym, lounging around the house? I prefer wearing my bird dogs when I'm on the golf course. I like making birdies in my bird dogs. Chilly morning, put on the bird dogs joggers for warmth, for flexibility, and uh, just looking great. Bird dogs are comfortable. They've got special fabric that hugs your legs, sculpts your thighs. They've got the liner on the inside that is so warm and so uh, breathing and airy. Keeps you cool, and yet it keeps you warm. It's like it's the perfect. It's sort of like the bird dogs tumbler. You know, keeps the hot drinks hot, the cold drinks cold. That's what the liners do for your legs. I've also got the Bird Dogs hat. And there's a new Bird Dogs promotion right now. When you go to birddogs.com slash locked on, use the promo code locked on, get a free Bird Dogs water bottle with any purchase. Bird Dogs water bottle with any purchase. Birddogs.com slash locked on. You'll get that anti-stink sweat wicking fabric, the cloud knit fabric on the inside, no stiff restricting cotton. So comfortable. Bird Dogs. Shorts. The pants, good for any occasion. 
Check them out today, brewdogs.com slash locked on. It's time for the Hanging Ron Johnson segment, and I'm excited. Like I said, I've always loved sitting down with Gophers. We've had Lamecki Brockington. Uh, we've had some other Gophers, Brevin Span Ford, and Jack Henderson. For those that don't know Jack Henderson, please get to know the name, but he's a safety for the Gophers, but he's the starting nickel. And I do the PJ Fleck show every week with PJ Fleck. And I asked him about Jack Henderson, and you could see his face kind of light up a little bit, talking about the way they can use this kid. We called it a joker. PJ just calls him a safety that plays the nickel. So I'm excited to bring Jack Henderson into the show. Uh, Jack, welcome to the show. Glad you're a gopher. Uh, yes, sky you my, roll the boat, go gophers. Uh, it's homecoming week. So I'm actually about that. that. That's always been the big joke with freshmen coming into college, because uh, mm-hmm. high school you have a dance. Yeah. When you got to, and you've been in college, so you're a transfer, but you've been yeah. in college. But when you yeah. when you got to Minnesota, and this week you found it was home, did you kind of think there might be some kind of dance happening? Yeah, yeah, I did, <laughs> I did. But I mean, uh, I know, I know, in, in most most colleges, it's it's a big thing. Yeah, you know, homecoming. It's it's a, everybody getting the alumni back, a lot of friends and a lot of family. Uh, it's a good time, good atmosphere. You know, uh, tensions are high. You know, everybody wants to play good, you know, because everybody's there. But, um, yeah, it definitely. So when did you find out there wasn't a dance, like an actual quote-unquote yeah. homecoming dance? Uh, you know, I I mean, I just kind of figured there wouldn't be, you know. Because <laughs> there are parties, people. Like, the Gophers yeah. campus is fun. I've, yeah. I played there for four years. There's a lot of stuff to do. My wife, you know, I met her at the University of Minnesota, so she was on the track team. So there's yeah. stuff to do, but there is no, like, there's no like dance. Like it's not yeah. like high school. So I know yeah. PJ Fleck always tells that joke every year on the PJ Fleck show that, you know, it's always the freshmen that say, Hey coach, where's the dance at after the game? And it's like, there's no dance. Like we're going to, yeah. we're going to play the, the this is championship field, season for Louisiana, uh, uh, raging Cajuns. Cause they want to take off all the other acronyms with their name. They're just Louisiana, uh, yeah. raging Cajuns and yeah. you beat them. And then you go on, you have fun. You meet your friends, you hang out with your family. Uh, but I'm excited about his two former guys I play with are coming in town. But, yep. Jack, let's talk about this, man. You played against North Carolina. Drake May is going to be a first-round pick. You're probably going to end up on his draft tape uh, because you are the example of what he did wrong, which is he assumed you were going to rush, you bluffed, and then you dropped back into coverage. He didn't see you, and you picked it off underneath. Um, take us through that moment of kind of bluffing the blitz and then understanding you're tracking his eyes and you're like, oh, he's throwing it. And you're able to yeah. pick it off. Because, I mean, what are you, 6'3"? Yes, about 6'2 flat. Yeah. Uh, my list of height would be 6'3". But, yeah, I'm about 6'2 flat, maybe a, maybe a little extra quarter of an inch. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, mainly going into that play, I think it was just a perfect uh, – it was honestly the perfect call for the play they, they had. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I went up. And then once he started rolling out, expanding out the pocket, the back shot out, and uh, you know I have to leverage the back out to the flat. Um, but I, I knew from a film study that the, the seven right, the, the seven route would most likely uh, be behind me. And uh, so really, we we call that playing top down. So I was playing top down on him, and he threw it, and uh, I was able to go up and get it. So it was just a perfect storm, good call, and uh, yeah, good play. Yeah, and as a safety at 6'3", 6'2", NFL caliber body, um, you look at a guy like Tyler Newbin. He's going to the NFL, no questions asked. Oh, yeah. What do you learn or what have you learned? I mean, it's only been a short amount of time. We know it's been, you know, a couple games early on, but you went through camp, spring ball. Oh, yeah. What What are you learning from seeing a guy like Tyler Newbin operate? Uh, you know, since he's been in the defense for so long, He's able. He's able to give us some tips, like uh, coach calls it, like level four and level five stuff. Because you know, you have, you have the base coverages and whatnot, mm-hmm. but but he sees things that that others don't see, and uh, I think that's because of his preparation. Um, you know, the guy's a freak um, athlete, obviously, but uh, he prepares like a freak too. Um, I mean, he comes. He comes. Uh, he comes in the meetings Monday. He already knows. Uh, he already knows the count, the, the the claps. I mean, he's he knows how to analyze and watch film. And uh, I think that's part of what makes him so good, other than, I mean, he's just a great athlete. But, uh, yeah, just taking his preparation, some some notes from him, watching him prepare has definitely helped me uh, for some of these big games. And, uh, you know, he's a great guy to have around in the room. You know, he's, he's, he's a great leader. And, he's, and I'm from Detroit, so I've been following Darius Taylor from the minute 
he committed to Minnesota. I started tweeting with him. We started talking. I was excited he was coming to University of Minnesota as a freshman. Like Detroit, it's tough to get kids to come from Detroit to Minnesota, which is weird, oh, yeah. but it, it is tough because Michigan, Michigan State, you got so many schools right in your area yeah. uh, first that want you, and then you still have a lot of other ones to bypass to get to Minnesota. When you think about Iowa, Wisconsin, Missouri, I mean, there's, I mean, even Kansas, there's a lot of other schools. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you, you, you go all the way up north and you got Minnesota. And so to get Darius Taylor the second here, uh, I was excited. And he has been everything that everybody thought he would be. Oh, yeah. Three weeks in a row, Big Ten Freshman of the Week. He's probably going to get it for the fourth. I mean, that's going to be my tweet game day morning. Like, Darius Taylor, as long as he can make it to game day healthy, he should be the fourth week in a row, Big Ten Freshman of the Week. He's doing yeah. things that no other freshman in, in Big Ten history has done. He's doing stuff that Lawrence Maroney, Marion Barber, Daryl Thompson, all NFL caliber, caliber running backs haven't done. Yeah. When you see this kid work as a freshman, man, what have you guys seen from like week one now heading into to later in the season? Uh, what I think it is the most is, you know, obviously he's got great athletic ability, but I'm I, me personally, I'm, I'm starting to see him more confident in himself, mm -hmm. you know, coming in as a freshman. Uh, even coming in as a transfer, you know, playing in, in big time atmosphere, it's not easy. You know, there's a mental battle there that you have to win. But I think he's been getting more confident in not only the offense, um, but confidence in himself that he can do what he's doing and he's doing it really well. So it's nice to see that growth from such a young player. You yeah, know? he is doing well. And you transferred in. So when you came in and P.J. Fleck was, you know, and of course this happened on your recruiting trip. You, you heard the roll the boat. You heard all the – what yeah. what did you first like what was your mindset when you kind of started to understand the roll the boat culture uh i think i think there's a lot of similarities in how i i was mentally thinking you know in my own life uh prior to it you know i was always kind of just a put my head down and work kind of guy mm -hmm. i mean that's what the program's all about um but you know it really started with coach danny as to why i wanted to come here um you know he showed up in my living room and uh I mean, we talked for for hours. Um, he's a great man, and uh, just just before even getting to Minnesota, I was like, just based off this guy, you know, I want him to be my coach. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, and then when I got here, um, you know, so I just fell in love. You know, it's everything you want as a player, you know, because because the way I saw it is I would have a hundred other guys with the same mindset as me, right? And, and that's really all I could ask for. You know, that's what I felt like I was missing. You know, there, there was a lot of guys around me that didn't have the same work ethic. Um, so just being surrounded by so many guys that are like like minded. Um, I knew I wanted to come here. And I've been there before, man, like 1999 or 2000. Yeah. Northwestern University walks into the University of Minnesota's uh, building. We were the Metrodome back then. And we didn't we were lucky enough to have TCF like you guys. Um, and we were up. We weren't up big, but we were up. Yeah. Well, we win at the end of the game, they throw a Hail Mary and they beat us. So I've been there with some heartbreaks, especially against Northwestern. Yeah. But as a player, 21 point lead, you see it dwindling, you go to overtime and it doesn't go in your favor. What what was going through your mind in that moment? We got to execute, you know, uh, we got to execute better. Um, I'd say our preparation, our preparation was good. You saw it through the mm -hmm. first three quarters. But um, I think. I think we just got to realize that nobody's going to lay down to us. You right. know, um, you got to finish games, especially at this level. You know, another Big Ten opponent, like every game, every game is a losable game. You know, every team, every every week, especially with college football nowadays, it's it's a toss up, you know. Uh, you know, so you have to want it. You got to finish games. Um, you got to execute and trust, trust the guys around you to do their job. And, uh, you know, you just can't let things like that happen, you know. And when you think about heading into playing Louisiana, and yeah. so you you mentioned that we got to finish games. Nobody's gonna lay down. Do you think that that game now becomes like an imprint in guys' brains to say, look, even if we're up thirty to nothing versus Louisiana, we have to put sixty on the board. Like, do you yes. do you now feel like guys have that mentality? Yeah, yeah. There's a sense of urgency for sure. You know, and that's 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 one of our words this week is attack. You know, coach keeps saying attack, attack this, attack that. You know, attack everything. Um, because that's what you have to do. And, and um, so that's the mindset we have, uh, you know, pedal to the metal. You know, we're going to attack these guys. They're going to attack us. Um, I'm from Louisiana, so I know how they play. I played against them last year at Southeastern. 
You okay. know, Louisiana is full of good talent. Um, a bunch of hard nosed football players is what I like to call them. And, uh, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a game we're going to have to show up for and, uh, you know, accelerate through the middle and finish strong. And, and something you weren't here for, but he's there now. So you got Tanner Morgan in the building as an yeah. offensive ana uh, analyst. And so you kind of can hear about Tanner Morgan. You hear about the wins and, and the leadership and so on and so forth, being here for six years. And yeah. now you turn the reins over to a younger guy, Nathan Calig Manis. Nathan Calig Manis has an NFL arm. He has an NFL body. Everybody talks about his NFL caliber play. But in games, it's been hit or miss. What have you seen from this young guy that gives the defense hope to feel like, you know what, if we could just keep teams to a certain number, we know Ethan and that offense can get it done. Yeah. I just, I just see him improving so much every single week. Um, but I mean, the guy can sling it. Yeah. You know? I mean, he, I don't, I don't know how, but the ball comes out of his hand <laughs> and it's just beautiful every time or most of the time. But, uh, yeah, just, just knowing that he has that ability and, um, uh, you know, the fact that he can lock in and, and get in that mode is inspiring. And, uh, you know, as a defense, regardless of, of what offense does, you know, we want to go out there and we want to allow no points. You know, every time we step on the field, you know, the expectation is a three and out. You know, that's how we look at things. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, it's just like I said, you know, we got a bunch of a bunch of hard nosed, like minded guys. And, uh, you know, his his some things I've seen from him. I know what he's got. And, uh, you know, I'm confident that he'll he'll find his stroke and, uh, you know, be able to do some great things for us moving forward. And you, yeah. and you guys have a lot of new pieces within this building. You got Darius Taylor. You got yourself. You got Jones at corner. Yes. Um, you know, you, you add a bunch of new bodies. But one thing P.J. Flex said is when you see guys come in and start to gel with this defense or this offense right away, they are – program guys they're culture guys yes uh what 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 makes you guys program or culture guys like where where did that mindset kind of start as a group in this offseason uh just just the discipline you know all the things we do around the facility uh the discipline uh you know you you know it um uh, all the culture stuff it's 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 imprinted in our heads you know and they they never come down from the standard every day they say the the price went up so your yesterday's price ain't today's price. Oh yeah. Um, you know, all that all that stuff, even the minute details, things you wouldn't even think about. They don't let the coaches don't let anything slide, you know. So you know, it's just it's it's all in the details for us. And and moving forward, you know, you guys are gonna have some big games coming up and PJ Fleck made a comment about this that this is one of the was the third most challenging schedule in college football as far as you got number two michigan and walk into this building you're gonna have yes. to deal with ohio state you're gonna have iowa wisconsin how do you guys make sure going to those games and even you know because every single game is a championship game for you guys it's, it's yes we're playing the next team so how do you guys get that mindset to kind of really just block out the noise and say this game is what matters now we're worried about michigan next week yeah uh, really, it just comes down to, uh, you know, our 11 got to be better than your 11. Uh, they say that all the time around the facility, and it's true. In, in especially in big time games, um, you can't afford to make little mistakes. You know, going against powerhouse offenses uh, and even defenses, uh, you know, those type of teams, even a little blown coverage or missed assignment, it will cost you a touchdown almost every time in those big games. And that's and that's a difference maker. Is uh, you know, they execute so well those 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 high high ranked teams so and that's people one, that no yeah what are you saying sorry yeah that's just one thing we got to focus on is the details especially big opponents um preparations got to be through the roof um, yeah so yeah you can't afford to miss execute in a huge time situation and when people like because jack henderson again new body on the scene uh but again making plays early on what do you want people to kind of know this is what Jack Henderson is about because you know we know Tyler Newbin, we know Darius Green now, we know Darius Taylor, we know Ethan Kelly Manis. But when you look back on your legacy, because I know PJ talks about that, like significance, what 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 are you about? What do you want Gopher fans to know most about Jack Henderson? Uh, I'm I just put my head down and go to work. You know, anywhere coach tells me to play on the field, I'm going to play, um, and I'm going to execute at, at the highest level I can. Um, you know, I was a zero star coming out of high school. Mm. Uh, everything I everything I have so far has been earned. And, uh, you know, I couldn't be more grateful for the opportunity to play on this stage. 
But uh, one major thing uh, is is more recently is uh, I've been getting more self confidence on the field, and uh, you know that's one thing I've been striving for. Is you know I've put in all the work, but when you start to make some plays and you start to get into the flow of the game, uh, you're able to block out all all the noise, so to speak. Um, you know it's a good feeling as a player when you can kind of just go out there and play football. So uh, that's what I'm most excited about is just keep playing football and uh, getting more comfortable out there. Yeah, and you hit the portal. So when you when you talked about that whole transfer process and picking Minnesota, what yeah. led you to Minnesota in the end? It was it was it was a great combination of a bunch of things. Uh, Coach Danny, Coach Fleck, and Coach Rossi. Um, not to mention, you can't you can't not mention the beautiful f- facilities and resources mm-hmm. that we have here. And I think that that perfect storm. You know, I talked with my parents, and I was like, hey. I was like, how do y'all feel about Minnesota, you know? And my dad just – he just shook his head. He was like, son, you know, that's where you need to be. Yeah. That's – I mean, and that's the key, too. Like, when your family can get into it and, and be involved and enjoy the process. And and, and last one for – or maybe one more than last one. Like, I'm like a strength coach. You know, I tell you it's one more, and then you got one more. But <laughs> – PJ Fleck often talks about, you know, he's raising young men. You know, he's like a a father to so many young men because he spends so much time with you guys and your families aren't there to help you go to class, help you study, help you wake up in the morning, help you get to practice. Heather feels like a mom at times because she's making sure as well that you guys are getting etiquette and and, and learning how to date and all this stuff. Um, How has that been from a a culture shift from one school to the next where the coach really does take time to kind of – help you become a man man it's i mean it's awesome it's i mean it truly is awesome uh from all angles i mean you know we show up it's mandatory we go to class it's mandatory we go to tutoring it's mandatory but uh really you have to reach a level of maturity uh where you know what you have to do becomes what you want to do and i know i spoke with you earlier in the week uh you know you know my schedule right now is tough you know but it's really instilling discipline you know that's really turning myself i'd say into a man it's just the discipline of the daily schedule, you know, you having to get up at 6 a.m., you know, you know, it becomes what you want to do. And uh, it's just a big part. And like I said, the resources are plentiful. We have we have I don't even know how many staff around that are just willing to help uh, between, you know, nutritionists, strength staff, um, tutoring, you know, academics, mental health. I mean, we have it all, all the resources. And, uh, you know, I couldn't be I couldn't be happier. Well, yeah, well, I'm Ron Johnson. Jack Henderson, go for fans. Please make sure you check him out on social media and make sure you continue to watch the rest of the season. I'm excited to see the rest of the season. Uh, It's going to be fun to watch. I've learned a lot about you from PJ Fleck doing the PJ Fleck show weekly. I hope I'm going to talk to uh, the Gopher staff. I hope we get you on the PJ Fleck show this year at some point. Uh, but, but, But make sure you guys watch out for this kid. Play safety but also comes in as a star nickel and PJ Fleck put it best. And you guys might've saw us on the PJ Fleck show last week. He said, when you can play base defense and still leave your safeties on the field, you're doing something right. And that's why Jack Henderson is a big part of this Vikings D or sorry, Gophers defense with uh, Joe Rossi, but I'm Ron Johnson coming up next. we got the daily three. That's three questions, three minutes each. Stay tuned. Well, that was great, Sam. I'm glad I got to talk to Jack Henderson. He's a good kid. I mean, he's talked about the, I think before, I don't know if we actually talked about it on the show, I'm forgetting, but I know he mentioned him and Jack Brewer took a picture together because he played with Jack's son. So it's funny. It's like maybe he was just destined to be a gopher. Like it was always meant to be when he met Jack Brewer and took a picture with a former gopher. And look at him now. He's now one of the best players on this defense for statistics you know like as far as interceptions making plays and pj fleck talk highly of him like i told him on the pj fleck show saying he's a kid that they can put in base defense and still get in the nickel still get blitzes off the edge so that's where i think you know he's going to come in handy big time uh with this michigan offense and slowing them down but we got to go to the daily three that's three questions three minutes each but remember people the twins i i, I finally can relax because i was so nervous Sam remembers this. I was so nervous all season. You were so scared to like just put my heart into this playoff run. And maybe they'll let me down during the playoff run, but I hope not. We'll talk about that in the daily three. But the twins start the playoffs against the Toronto Blue Jays at 3.38 this afternoon. Catch every pitch of the hometown broadcast on the SXM app. Just search twins. Who's going to hit the hill? Who's going to hit the home runs? The weather today looks good. It's Minnesota October. It's not cold yet, even though I see people blowing their sprinklers out. I don't know why, but it's Minnesota October and it's good weather. So please 
make sure you can listen to the game on your phone outside. You don't have to sit in your car. You don't have to sit in your house with your XM radio. You can take your phone, cut the grass, do whatever you got to do, and catch every pitch of the hometown broadcast. Well, Sam, now it's time for the daily three. That's three questions, three minutes each. I'm going to spend about 30 seconds to a minute today. Take it away. Let's talk twins then. Three game series against Toronto starts today. Ron, there are mm-hmm. four possible outcomes twins in two, twins in three, blue jays in two, blue jays in three. What do you think is going to happen? Which of those four outcomes? I think twins in three. I really do. I think the twins right now have the momentum. I think they're 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 playing well. Um, and the fact that they're at home, like that's the key. Like being able to be home. Uh, is a little bit different atmosphere. You'll get the playoff atmosphere. You'll get the crowd behind you. Like I said, good weather. Uh, so for them to be able to get the Blue Jays at home, them you know kind of solidifying their seed early, so they were able to maybe get some guys uh, rested to go into this game. Uh, it's all about momentum, though, Sam. It's all about momentum. But I think the Twins in three. I think the Blue Jays might be able to get one from them. If it's Twins in two, I think I'll be even happier. But it's Twins in three. I just hope they don't lose the first one. If you win the first one, it gives you way more confidence. If you lose the mm-hmm. first one game two you're under a tremendous amount of pressure because you're like this is it if we lose this next one and that's what the blue jays will be under even if the blue jays win the energy and emotion it takes to stay alive and then to try to win the next game it puts the edge whoever wins the first one so i'm gonna i'm gonna really hope today i feel like the twins should win five to two sam should be a five to two victory today five, that's you're gonna come to two. live okay that's gonna be live and, and the defense is gonna come in when they need them in the end five to two twins win i don't know what do you think yeah, um, I I want to say twins in two because if it goes to three, I don't trust our our game three pitching as much. Um, I love mm. our our first two guys, so I think they got to take care of business right today, today and tomorrow. Shut it down, end it, win these two, get out of here. Um, so that's my call. Twins in two, ready to get my heart broken. Uh, n- yeah. I was because the sad part about that is the twins are playing a team that's 99 and 63. So they have a better record than them. <laughs> so technically they're the underdog. But the yeah. twins are on a seven and three winning streak right now. Seven and three is their record of the last 10. At home, they've been 47 and 34, whereas the Blue Jays on the road, 46 and 35. So pretty similar teams on the road and at home. These are two because at home, the Blue Jays are 53 and 28. Wow. So that's the good thing. Because we have to go to the, Toronto. The analysis I've read is all the national people think this is a really evenly matched series. A couple of so. clubs that can pitch, a um, couple of clubs that have some star hitters. So it's going to be it's going to be tight. Might be yeah. a, a come down to the ninth inning. Uh, back to football. Mm-hmm. Cam Akers really impressed people in his debut on Sunday. Five carries, forty yards, a couple receptions. Ron, does he deserve more work against the Chiefs after his impressive first outing? Yeah, yeah, clearly. I mean, you wanted a two running back system anyway. You had it with Alexander Madison and Dalvin Cook. That's what people forget. When Alexander Madison was the backup to Dalvin Cook, he was getting, you know, eight to 10 carries a game as well. Um, So I don't see why you go away from that. Alexander Madison seems like he needs more production and more carries to get going. Whereas Cam Akers is like a, he's a quick pistol starter. He doesn't need a lot. Like he's just like, boom, I'm on fire. Put me in, I'm ready to go. And he's been in this offense with the Rams where you're not going to get, you know, 30 carries a game. You're going to get 15 to 20. You got to make the most of it. So what he does is he makes the most of it. He's sudden, he's fast, he's quick. He had fresh legs. I think that was part of it too. But he looked like a sudden change of pace back that they need. Um, New scenery too for players is always a good thing sometimes. He maybe, you know, he was getting stagnant with the Rams. It was time to go somewhere else. But yes, I think he deserves and has earned more carries. I would say I like the usage, you know, 15 carries for Madison maybe, and maybe 10 for him. You run the ball 25 mm-hmm. times. The other key, though, is what people forget. They only have 44 plays. That's the other problem. Kevin O'Connell needs to go a little up-tempo. Like, he needs to speed the game up a little bit so he can get 60 plays in. If you get 60 plays in, those 25 runs still, still allow for 35 passes. And that's the problem. But when you don't speed the game up, those 25 runs, which we saw, only allow for 19 passes. So that's the key. You can still get 15 and 10 to both running backs, but you got to run more plays. You got to get to the line of scrimmage faster. You got to, like, if you know you just threw a deep ball to Justin Je- or a, a quick out to Justin Jefferson, come back to the line and throw a hitch. Like, because now the defense is on their heels and they don't know what's coming next and they, they're going to give you an easy look. So I just think they need more plays. Around 44 plays is definitely not enough time of possession. They got crushed 38 to 21. Um, they they got to speed the game up a little bit and hold on to the ball less three and out. So I don't know. What do you thought? Do you think do you think Cam Akers gets more carries or do you think he should? 
Yeah, I do think he should. I I thought that he showed a great burst. His first step was really explosive, and he seems like he's strong at the point of tackle. He falls forward. He's got good momentum, even though he's not like the biggest guy ever. Yeah, get him involved. Let's uh, let's see if that spark can continue. And mm-hmm. credit to Madison too. He was also very good in that game. It wasn't just yeah. Acres. So For I don't sure. think Acres needs to replace him. But no, yeah, no. let's let's see more of that. Um, last one, Ron. This came up last week after your show. I don't know if we've fully gotten into it. And maybe this is a, a topic for next week's show as well uh, in the open. But mm-hmm. PJ Fleck made a plea for more NIL money so the Gophers don't become a, quote, triple A program mm-hmm. for other teams. Uh, do you think this is a real risk, Ron, that the Gophers now face in this NIL era? Yes, 100%. Darius Taylor leads the Big Ten. He's third in the nation. So now he's on everybody's radar. So if I am... Uh, UCLA, if I am USC and I'm hitting the Big Ten, if I'm if I'm Colorado, you know, and I'm hitting the Big Ten, and even though they're going to the Big 12, I'm like, man, like I can get a guy who still gets to play against teams like Michigan, where his family can see him. Because I'm pretty sure Minnesota was a nice destination for Darius Taylor because he realized, like, I'm going to play Michigan State, I'm going to play Michigan, my family's going to still see me. I'm on Fox every week or Big Ten Network, which is in Michigan because it's the Big Ten, so my family can watch me on TV every weekend as well. So there's a lot to that because if you want, if you go to the Pac-12, your family in Michigan can't watch Pac-12 football. Like I don't, I don't have access to Pac-12 football because it's not in my area, but I have access mm-hmm. to Big Ten football on uh, on on TV. You know, my my service provider, and so that's the thing. Like, why would you not want to go somewhere that's going to offer you a hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars to be their running back? Look at Bucky. Bucky clearly got money from Oregon, and he's balling at Oregon, but he got money. So yes, PJ Fleck is is very clear with it he's very true to it and that's the thing you put out big numbers people are going to come after you like i i mean honestly think about if nil was around rashad bateman as a freshman and tyler johnson S- schools probably would have come after them like mm-hmm. they would have come after rashad bateman for sure after that freshman sophomore year knowing he has to come back to school for one more year because it was that weird covet time anyway they would offer them you know same thing 50 grand 100 grand like kids are backups now and not sorry, not back. They're starters, but they're not like NFL like first round picks. They might be third round picks, but they're good for their school. You got donors and people that's willing to pay to, to help their team get better. And that's where Minnesota has so many organizations. We have so many sports here. We are, we are the most saturated town in the country. I, I bet. I mean, other than I mean, I guess New York has a lot, um, and I guess um, California probably has a lot. But they're but they're so spread out. They already know what's going on there. But Minnesota is extremely saturated for everything being like right in the same spot. When you look at, because New York is for sure saturated, I know that. But you look at the Twins, Timberwolves, Vikings, all this stuff. Um, Because even for New York, they don't have a college team really. Like, Mm -hmm. who's their college? You know what I mean? Like, there's no NIL issues with New York because there's no college. I mean, there's Syracuse, but nobody's really putting them as like New York's school. You know, like that's the problem with that. So you don't have that issue down there. Like Florida is so spread out. You got Gainesville. They're not near Miami with the Dolphins, you know, like, but Minnesota, you're right next door to the Vikings. You're right next door to the twins in the playoffs right now. You got to fight your schedule with the Lynx, with the twins, with the, the wild that's about to start, which this is hockey town. You got your own high college hockey teams that are really good. So Minnesota is extremely saturated. And I think PJ Fleck is on to some though. These players, if they don't get taken care of, if people don't start to love on them like they love on their pro sports and they spend all this money going to games, put a little money into the college program, help them keep their players. This is the this is the market we created for name, image, and likeness. But because if they don't, these players are going to move on. I hope that PJ and the powers that be with the Gophers, I hope they're consulting with NFL GMs because the the Gophers are like an NFL team that has limited salary cap space yep so they have to be stewards of that money and allocate it properly right and we'll never know how much they actually have but right. they have to make decisions with limited money all mm-hmm. right do we do we pay this running back or do we pay this edge rusher do we right. pay this quarterback or do we do we pay this uh safety right they've got to they've got to have now a sense of positional value and what positions are worth and there's no rule book for it, right? Because right. it's NIL. It's not like a real, it's not a hard cap. It's like it's like baseball where there is no salary cap. Right. Um, so the gophers are 
the twins and everyone else is the Yankees. Like it's just, it's totally uneven and the Gophers have to try to win on a budget. It's, it's like professional sports. Truly. It's uh, it's crazy. Yeah. It's extremely crazy. Uh, it is what it is, but uh, I, I know I'm personally trying to see if I can work with brands myself and I'm willing to shoot commercials with these players. If that helps uh, mm -hmm. to help you guys get content, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more, maybe on the round table. A little bit of NIL and, and, and get that out conversation out there, what everybody thinks on Friday on the round table. Uh, make sure you guys check out the gopher or sorry, the football party, the Minnesota football party, four days a week with Arif Hassan, Luke Inman, Luke Braun, Sam Extra. I join a uh, pretty good cast of people. And then also the Friday round table, myself, Sam, Luke, Reggie, Julia has now been joining us. Uh, it's been a fun couple of weeks of doing that. So make sure you guys check that out because we got a lot to talk about this Friday. There's a lot of football, big football this week, and Patrick Mahomes. And are we going to see a Taylor Swift sighting? Are the Swifties going to be at the airport over in Eden Prairie? Because we know she's flying private to see if her jet lands. Are we going to get Fox 9, NBC with Care 11? Is every is ESPN going to show up? Are they going to be at the airport waiting for Taylor Swift to show up at, at the Flying Cloud uh, Airport to see if she's in town? But I'm Ron Johnson. That's Sam Ekstrom. See you guys on Friday. Take care. <laughs>